I think we're okay. Good to go. Well, just me myself um, in the time being, but again, if you need anything from me, just let me know. Yep, sounds good. Thank you. Okay, so we'll just get started. So thank you so much for everyone for joining us here this evening. Um, we really, really appreciate it, giving up your Wednesday evening to come and join us. So my name is Olivia, and I'm joined by my colleague, Sarah, tonight, and we are both from Lokia Locum. We are work in the marketing team at Lokia Locum. Some people who maybe are joining the call maybe know us from um, the conference that we attended last month over in Norwich. Um, so it was great meeting everyone there. And so we're really looking forward to sharing some more insights um, about the world of Locum and, and to tell you about you know, what Lokia Locum does and the benefits that Locum can have for your future career. So just get started. So here's a little bit of an agenda just for this evening. So we're going to cover who Lokia Locum are, what we do. Uh, we're going to talk about the, how locum work compares to full-time roles and vice versa. We're going to cover some compliance and onboarding, how to succeed as a locum, and then towards the end of the event, if there's any questions or anything that you may have, uh, we've got some dedicated time then to answer them ourselves. So I'm going to pass yeah. over just to Sarah then uh, to cover what is a locum. Yes, so what is a locum? It sounds like a fairly straightforward question, but we all start somewhere. So what is a locum? A locum by definition is someone who stands in temporarily for someone of the same profession. Typically we hear this within the context of healthcare, um, might be aware of a locum doctor, there's also the likes of a locum vet and obviously a locum pharmacist as well. So one of the really interesting things about being a locum and working as a locum pharmacist is you're actually self-employed. So you're not tied to any particular employer. You're not tied to any one chain, one store, which actually gives you an awful lot of freedom, which we'll touch on later on um, in your career and actually shaping it exactly how you want it to be. Um, it is actually so important um, for locums to be in the pharmacy space. Um, you may or may not be aware that a pharmacy store isn't actually able to open unless there is a registered pharmacist there to work that day. Um, so particularly whenever it comes to last minute illness um, within a pharmacy, potentially if the regular pharmacist has fell ill that day, locums are truly an invaluable member of the pharmacy community. And they make up a really large proportion of the shifts. We've seen that particularly after COVID, um, the pharmacy industry relied so heavily on locums. So that is sort of locums um, at a top level. Now, our next slide is we have a little bit of an explainer video all about locate a locum. So Olivia, if you want to hit play on that there. And if it plays, that is another story. Let me see. Can you hear any sound? No, there doesn't seem to be any sound on that, but that's no worries at all. What we can do here is if you just hit pause there, Olivia, what we can do is just give a really brief um, explanation on Locator Locum. And then what we can do is after this webinar, we can send out the record the slides so that you can watch the video in your own time. Really apologies for those technical difficulties there. Um, so Olivia, do you want to give um, the people an update on the, our story so far? Yes, perfect. Yeah, so Lokia Locum, so we were founded in 2016. So we recently celebrated our eighth birthday and our founder and CEO is actually a qualified pharmacist, Johnny Clark. He graduated from Queen's University Belfast back in like 2012 and worked as a hospital pharmacist. And then also was picking up some locum shifts on the side. So um, you see here we've referenced business card roulette. So essentially what that means is Johnny used to, like only in 2012, used to have to go into pharmacies and leave off business cards. And, you know, there was no like digital platform or like a sort of streamlined way to find work. So you were essentially left up to, you know, pure chance of the pharmacy manager picking up your business card and calling you for a shift. So he really seen firsthand how, you know, the locum uh, community were really missing out on work and like finding like consistent shifts. So he created Lokia Locum and its first, you know, guys, which was a WordPress website. Um, his wife did a lot of the 
branding and design and literally he spent his free time ringing pharmacies all over the UK asking them for shifts to post on the website so we have now grown um to we, we are headquartered in Belfast and we've grown to a team of 50 people across marketing like myself and Sarah sales customer success operations and locum support so the company um has really seen a lot of growth in the last eight years which is incredible um, and we'll be talking more about just sort of like the journey that we have been on to so this is some of the clients that we currently work with. So you'll see here, you know, Super Drug Boots, as a lot of the large multiples, and um, also Day Lewis. Um, you also notice we've got spec savers on our list. So we aren't exclusively in the pharmacy market. We also work in optometry too. And um, so that is why spec savers is included. So, um, you know, we do work with a lot of the large chains, but we also work with independents too. You know, some people might prefer to work with independent pharmacies, which is absolutely perfect. So there's a good range of shifts that are available to you on the platform. Yeah, yeah. so local work versus full time. It's a question that we get asked an awful lot, particularly from newly qualified pharmacists or pharmacy students about to embark on their foundation training year. Sort of what way is the best way to sort of kickstart your pharmacy career? And there's pros and cons to both options. And it would be remiss of us not to talk about the pros of both options as well. Obviously, we're slightly biased being from Locator Locum. And um, so we're going to start off talking about the benefits of working as a locum. So the biggest benefit of locum and locum work in general is the flexibility that it offers you. Um, the benefits of locum in, it means that you can work for any different store that you want on any day that you want as often or as little as you want. So you can really shape it around your own work life. Um, particularly with post COVID, that is the flexibility of locum work is seen as a big plus. You know, people being able to pick up shifts in and around safe childcare, um, in and around sometimes even if they have a full time job, some people choose to locum on the side as well. Um, the other thing with the flat flexibility is it really gives you op opportunity to buy, try before you buy, so we, so to speak. So before maybe taking on a full time contract in any given store, or potentially going toward sign a contract with a particular chain, um, or potentially an independent pharmacy, you actually get to see what what it's like and actually see what sort of style or environment suits you best. We have some people who prefer the sort of more larger corporates, such as the likes of Super Jug or Boots, or then there's other people who prefer this, this style and the vibe in a smaller independent pharmacy. So the flexibility of local work means you actually get to try it all. Um, you are self-employed, which offers you an awful lot of freedom. And it also sort of really means that you're in charge of your own earning potential as well. Um, there is some really, really good earning potential within local work as well. Um, the money within local work, particularly in the past number of years, has been fantastic. You know, the sort of average rate, it tends to be in around £35 an hour. Now, the thing with the local work and being self-employed as well is the rates do fluctuate given um, the market circumstances, which I'll touch on a little bit later. Um, another thing about locum work, which is a really big benefit, is you can actually start straight away. You can start even while you are working as a pharmacy student um, or studying, sorry, as a pharmacy student. Um, you don't have to wait for any sort of onboarding. You're able to see a shift as a locum dispenser, as a pharmacy student, and you're able to pick it up pretty much straight away, which is fantastic. And we'll go into that in a wee bit more detail later on as well. Um, and particularly for our newly qualified pharmacists, it's an amazing way to get experience that you just wouldn't maybe get in your foundation year you know if you're potentially in a pharmacy during your foundation year that maybe isn't working with a lot of methadone patients or maybe isn't working as closely with nursing homes or etc etc you can really try around different pharmacies to actually build out that experience and keep all of those skills sharp um because sometimes you can sort of lose some of those clinical skills along the way um and also one of the things that's quite interesting as well with local work is it isn't just based on community. Look at locum, we specialised in community pharmacy locum work. However, there is opportunities to locum in different areas, which I can go on to touch on um, in the next slide. If Olivia, Olivia, if you move on, please. Yeah. Yeah. So one area which might be more familiar to yourselves as pharmacy students is with that within research and academia. So that is sort of taken on the post as a lecturer, you know, that sort of stands in front of you in those lectures uh, that you go to um, at the minute. Um, 
you know that also would also be working as, as part of a research team in which you can actually work on drug design and care provision strategies for patients. Um, which can be really interesting, you know, if while you're doing your research papers and your assignments, you're finding you're really enjoying the academic side um, of your university career so far, there is the opportunity for you to stay in that sort of role. Um, I know that we do work with um, some pharmacists um, such as Yazir over in Microform. Um, he for a very long time part, worked part time um, in research and academia over in De Montfort University. So that's always an option for you as well. Um, so next slide there, Olivia. And we can touch on hospital pharmacy, which a lot of you will probably be interested in. I know a lot of people choose to do their foundation year um, either fully in hospital pharmacy or they sort of split between community and hospital pharmacy. And again, this is a fantastic sort of really dynamic um, placement where you can do local work um, through, you can also work in hospital pharmacy full time. You'll be really um, involved in the care of patients within the wards, sort of working with a whole team in the hospital setting to provide care for the patients. Um, you'll be working with manufacturing medicine and you can actually play a really lead role in the hospital um, environment as well, which can be really, really, really fulfilling. And some people really do like um, the hospital space as Olivia touched on before, the founder of Lucia Lucum, he actually sort of began his um, pharmacy journey within the hospital setting. Um, so it can be a really, really good place for some people. So next up, Olivia, community yeah. pass over to yourself yeah. then. thank you so much yeah so i think whenever people probably hear of a pharmacist people obviously probably assume community pharmacy you know um something that's in everyone's local local area so the up like there's the clear you know job roles being you know the dispensing of medication and helping patients but it really you know is such a varied role in itself Do you know like you act as such a vital part of your local area you know helping people understand their medicines or ailments especially I think now with you know pharmacy first launching in January you know those clinical skills that you learn at university now are so transferable and you can really put them to good use really helping people to understand you know whatever is um the issue um so there's like the, those that side of community, but there's also like a large entrepreneurial sort of enterprise side to community pharmacy, which is extremely interesting. You know, you can actually go to own your own pharmacy in your area. And then you have to like, you know, understand sales, marketing, staffing, um, prescription buying, everything they got there also. So it's a really varied role. Um, if you are maybe somebody who would like to get into the business side of pharmacy whenever you have your degree, um, like from my own previous experience, I worked in, uh, I, I did work in marketing for a large regional chain in Northern Ireland. And that was a pharmacist who owned one chemist and now owns 35 across Ireland, which is, you know, incredible. There's a large part of, you know, entrepreneurship there to that to community, which is something uh, that may be of interest to you. Also, like another element of pharmacy could be humanitarian. So I know that Johnny has spoken previously um, at different meetings and things that some of his peers went to areas that really had like famine and war. And he really, uh, sorry, they went and like supported people who really are at their most in need. Um, he said it's, it's an amazing opportunity to be able to help people in that circumstance. The experience that you gain is, you know, it's nothing that you're going to get in the UK. You know, you're in such high pressure situations, you're dealing with doctors, people on the ground, you know, in, in really high pressure situations and the skills that you gain um, on the humanitarian trips, you know, so are so, you know, um, attractive whenever you come back to the UK, you know, to be able to discuss the qualities and the skills and the experience that you have gained, you know, in, in those situations. And so Sarah has touched upon, you know, um, locum work for, for, versus full time. So it's only fair for us to talk about full time work also, because, you know, it really depends on what sort of life stage that you're in, like whether you want to locum or find um, a full time role. So we'll see here the first point. So it, working as a full time pharmacist, it may give you greater financial stability. So you have a contract between the employer and yourself. So, you know, at the last day of the month, you are getting paid your X amount of wages where as a locum, as you are self-employed, this is very much depends on how many shifts that you work each month, depending will influence your salary then towards the end. Um, 
in a full-time role there's also a lot more opportunity for career progression um, especially if you're maybe in larger like corporate structures you can maybe come in as a pharmacist grow to be a, a manager a regional manager you know if if sort of career progression is something that you're very interested in you know maybe full-time work would be more of a route for you um, we also talk about how full-time roles may depend as I said on your life cycle so perhaps maybe if you wanted to settle down um, and the family or whatever it may be you know you sort of want the guaranteed income at the end of the month um, and also to have all of your receipts and the perks of working for um, a larger company but I will like caveat all of that that so many of our locums may work full-time but also you're able to pick up locum shifts you know say at the weekend or maybe on your day off it can be a really good boost to your experience and as Sarah has touched upon, so perhaps if you did want to work in your full time roles in the hospital and you sort of said wanted to keep in with community pharmacy, like you're more than able to pick up a few shifts, say, in your local boots or Asda um, to really get that experience, which is um, which is a, a huge benefit of locum in to give you that flexibility sort of to boost your experience in also. Yes, and we touched on one of the ways that's potentially more easily accessible to you as pharmacy students or potentially going into your foundation training year on getting started with locum work. Because um, a few people don't necessarily realise that you actually can locum as a dispenser, um, which again can give you absolutely amazing um, experience, particularly this early on in your career. So you can sign up with Locata Locum as a dispenser today basically um and there are shifts available right across the uk um again you can work close to where you are you can work in the city potentially where you're studying as a student also if you potentially have traveled for university you can also work in your home city so it really gives you the opportunity there to make a little bit of extra money while you're studying and which is always nice and also again really gain that experience and network as well um, one thing that we always like to stress, particularly to people who are newer in their pharmacy career, is we cannot stress enough how small the pharmacy world is. And you never quite know who you're going to meet along the way. And we always sort of say you never know where a locum shift can take you. We have had people work a locum shift um, potentially on a random Saturday or Sunday and then they actually find they were going for a full time role and the pharmacist that they were locum in with the month prior was on the interview panel. So that's one of the things whenever you're locum in, it's really important to put your best foot forward and really gain those connections that can really aid you as you go forward in your pharmacy journey because you never know when you're going to meet people further down the line. I know that Olivia and myself, we go to different trade um, trade shows and conferences within the pharmacy um, industry and it is just crazy how many people you see time and time again in those sort of events and again it's the same whenever you're locum in you'll come across people who potentially you're sat across with in the classroom at the minute and then five six years from now you'll potentially be working alongside them in the pharmacy as well so really using locum in as an opportunity to build your network and support system within the pharmacy space is invaluable really now we do have a video from a really um, excellent dispenser and um, she's pharmacy sister on tiktok hopefully it plays hopefully. if it does that would be great oh no okay. there's no sign no that's okay. Um, as I say, she is pharmacist sister on TikTok. So really recommend giving her a follow um, because she's really, really interesting. And she does document um, her life as a student and also as a locum dispenser. Um, as, as we said before, we have the slides and we can send out these videos to you. So, and we really recommend giving that one a watch. She'll take you through a full day in the life in a locum dispenser shift. So you can actually get a feel for what it would be like. But now we're on to the very boring, um, well, very boring part. It's compliance. There's no dressing it up, right? It's the process that is probably the least fun part of locum and work. But the good thing about it is, is you do it once and you never have to think about it ever again. <laughs> So whenever it comes to signing up as a locum, essentially there's just some box ticking exercises you have to do to begin with once you sign up with Locata Locum, just so that we can we can be assured that you are who you say you are and again pass it on to the pharmacies because as I'm sure you're aware, we cannot have any Tom, Dick and Harry walking into a pharmacist saying that they are fully qualified. Um, so go into a wee bit more depth as a pharmacy locum dispenser. What you will need is your photographic ID. 
You'll also need proof that you're studying on a pharmacy related degree. Also, if you have an NVQ for dispensing, that can also work, um, a level three NVQ. Um, or if you don't have that and you're on your MPharm degree, all you need is proof that you're on the degree. We also require a reference. So that can be from your tutor at university. It can also be from potentially some of you might be working part time in a pharmacy, maybe on the weekends, on the odd shift, helping out in the stores to gain some experience. If you have any reference there, you can also use them as well. And um, then whenever you have finished your foundation year and you have passed and you are now a fully registered pharmacist on the GPHC register, what you, we then can do is we can essentially upgrade your profile from a locum dispenser to a fully qualified pharmacist. Um, in order to become a fully qualified pharmacist, what we would then need from you is your GPHC number, obviously, or the equivalent if you are in Scotland or Northern Ireland. We then also would need an enhanced police check. So that is your enhanced DBS, your enhanced access and I, and then I think it's the PVG in Scotland. Olivia, please correct me if I am wrong. And, <laughs> and then what we will need is your indemnity insurance. Um, now, Olivia is going to touch on that in a little bit more depth later on. And then again, your photographic ID. Um, but once we have a copy of all of these, you essentially upload them onto your Locator Locum profile. And what we like to say is your Locator Locum profile is essentially a living CV. So what we do is we pass on all of this information along with if you have potentially any additional accreditations, such as dementia friends, and um, we can pass all of these accreditations on to future employers, which means it can actually help you win shifts in the future. And it also means that you don't have to be running around with all these documents to every single employer um, whenever you're booking shifts. So that's sort of the compliance in a nutshell, but we will be sending out a little bit of extra resources on this part because I can't I cannot stress enough how important it is just make sure you take the time to do it at the beginning but Olivia I will pass it on to you yes brilliant thank you yeah so a lot of the time we are asked you know like how do you protect yourself as a local pharmacist you know like what can you do to make sure that you are covered if anything might happen in store so Sarah has already touched upon that you know the indemnity insurance is an essential document with us so essentially this covers um any risk or dispensing areas areas that may you know happen um on a shift you know it sort of covers it that you know if something does happen and somebody maybe puts in a claim against you that the insurance provider then will you know compensate um to make sure that you know you are protected um it's something that's very vital we work closely with the um national pharmacy association the npa um and also the pda then also offer insurance so we can also send out after the um, event resources on more information just about um, indemnity insurance as a whole. Um, we also offer whenever you do um, start to work via us, we sort of cover like 50% of the cost of your insurance via our level of rewards. So essentially, I think like maybe a cover could be from like 100 to 100, £150. Um, and we sort of give back a uh, 50 pounds then towards your fees whenever you work a certain amount of shifts. But it's really, really important to have that cover um, just in case anything does go wrong in a shift to make sure that you are protected and that your registration at the GPHC is also protected. Um, another way to sort of mitigate like any risks that may happen uh, during a shift, you know, the CPD, your like continuous professional development and training are so important. So I know that you are required as a pharmacist to complete a certain amount of CPD each year. So it's really, really important to stay up to date with the latest trends, healthcare advice, um, you know, vaccination information and things that got there. So whenever you are signed up to Locate Locum, you're actually given free access to our online CPD platform called Locate Learning. So most recently, you know, we uploaded pharmacy first modules. So it was quite difficult to access training in this area uh, due to demand. So our locums are able to access free CPD modules online. You're able to store all of your peer reflections and um, all of your points all within like your locate learning plot, um, sorry, profile. So whenever it comes to, um, I think it's maybe May time with summer, around the summer that you mm -hmm. have to then submit for revalidation. So you're easily able then to extract that information and um, to make sure that you are fully compliant then for the year going forward. But it's really it's really great to have those courses under your belt to make sure that you are sort of protected from any like, you know, new ailments or queries or things like that there that may come from, you know, patients and, and the public too. 
so we've sort of put together here like so some top tips on how to succeed at whatever you are up and going and working as a locum so we've touched upon some of these already but we'll just do a quick run through so I think like the number one advice anyone ever gives is be organized because as you are self-employed maybe you're working you know a lot of shifts during the month and um, some locums with us might work 25 shifts in a month so it might work one every two weeks you know it can be really really varied but it's so important to stay on top of you know tracking your expenses um you know travel mileage account like whatever it may be um to make sure that whenever you are completing like your self-assessment at the end of the month or sorry the end of the year that then you're then able to easily access you know all of that information it's also really useful to stay up to date with like your invoicing um and so like, with the app itself this makes it a lot easier because with our dairy feature, you're able then to see how much income you are uh, should be paid, you know, that month. So if there's any discrepancies or anything like that there, then you're able then to easily pinpoint, you know, where that comes from. So the app sort of is a real support system there. Um, our second point here is that, uh, and Sarah explains this so well, so reputation matters. You know, as I said, like the pharmacy industry is very, very small. As a locum, you know, you want to present yourself in the most positive way whenever you're going to a shift. Um, I think a really great top tip that many of our locums say is like ring up the, the pharmacy before your shift and just introduce yourself. It can be a two minute call. Just say, hi, I'm Olivia. I'll be working tomorrow. Like, is there anything I can do for you? Do you know, perhaps maybe that pharmacy manager needs a certain patient case dealt with or whatever it may be. You know for them to be able to share that information with you and for you to do it it really like like um supports the burden of them and also you know it, it leaves a really positive impression um for you so that whenever you maybe apply for a shift the next time you could be accepted um be over someone else who because you want the extra mile to actually make a personal connection so it's really important just to bear that in mind um, and i spoke about before about maintaining your cpd it's really i can't really stress how important it is you know as a local man as a pharmacist too just to make sure that you are aware of everything that is sort of going on um with locate learning there's different sort of learning paths that you can go down so you know it, it can be like you know your minor ailments otc clinical and um, even some like business you know we're looking to do a lot more collaboration with you know pmr systems that you might be experiencing whenever you do locum shifts so we'll be providing training um, on different systems that you may come to face with that can be quite, you know, a blocker for some people, you know, if you're not really confident in it. Um, I'll also say there that, you know, 99% of pharmacies are very open for you to come in maybe like a day or two before your shift for half an hour or so, even to sort of experience the PMR system, just so that you are fully confident, you know, whenever you go in for your shift. Um, you know, it, it probably will be unpaid, like, but to make sure that you are going in um, at a really confident level for your actual shift, um, it is a plus. And most of them are very, very, you know, content with you going in to do that. So I'm going to pass over to Sarah then to cover so the lovely locum rates. I know it's the sexy topic everyone talks about when it comes to locum and the money. <laughs> Um, so whenever it comes to locum in, um, we always get a question sort of begin with is who's actually setting the rates, who's coming up with these numbers that are sat in the app? And the answer is really simple. It's the pharmacies themselves. So everything to do with a locum shift that appears on Locate a Locum or actually any provider ever, um, anything to do with the rate is actually decided by the pharmacy themselves. So that is everything from the hours of the shift, the length of the shift, um, breaks, and then also the rate, um, the early rate as well. Now, whenever it comes to the rate as well, um, as it's really important to understand that rates fluctuate um, given the external market. And there's a number of different factors that can actually influence locum rate. And I think sometimes whenever you actually understand some of these factors, it can actually help you maximize your income that way as well. So one of the things that we always see as a big factor is seasonality. So locum rates fluctuate depending on the time of the year. And these can be sometimes very predictable. Um, for example, a lot of the time whenever locum work um, is needed is for whenever actual the, the whenever the regular pharmacist is on annual leave. Um, so everyone needs to take annual leave and there's times a year where that could be quite predictable for for example in around the holiday times school breaks different religious periods you can nearly um 
You can nearly predict when the, there's going to be a high demand for locums. For example, around December time, around that holiday season, there can be a real rise. And um, what we actually find is Christmas Day. If anyone cares to work on Christmas Day, it can be a really um, high earner. I think our highest paid shift last year was on Christmas Day. It was about three hours, but you were given £95 an hour. Um, I think was the highest paid shift that we had last year on Locate a Locum. Um, again, there's other times, for example, in around Easter can be a really high earning time. Um, and again, the school holidays. Um, and again, that's just seasonality. It's real supply demand. Um, and you'll see this sort of common um, in a couple of these different external factors as well. So the next thing is market forces. Market forces. So that can be whenever there is a big change in the market. For example, Pharmacy First um, launched there in at the end of January, start of February time was really coming into effect and with that you maybe saw that there was an increase in local shifts to begin with while the regular pharmacists were being sent on training within their companies um also that potentially will be an impact on rates due to pharmacists having to do more services as well and um, so different factors like that um, another example in the past of a big market force that changed the rates was covid um, and naturally, because of everything that happened with COVID, there was a really, really big demand for locums because no one was really wanting to go in out of their house um, at the time. So that meant that that really drove the rates up um, and they were incredibly, incredibly high um, during the COVID period. And that has sort of somewhat settled because, again, we are now out of COVID. Everything sort of settled from that. Um, so that was a really good example of seeing a real peak. And then it sort of come down within the market. And again, the last factor, which is kind of interesting as well when it comes to locuming, is your location. So this is the real supply and demand um, in, in action. So basically, where there is more pharmacists, you'll find that the rates are lower because there are more people looking for to, to fill one shift. And you'll usually find that there'll be one locum that is potentially cheaper than all other. So that sort of would help. Well, that sort of would mean that the rates would be slightly lower in areas where they are more densely populated with locums, for example, London being one of them. On the other side of that is in areas where there is a real lack of pharmacists, for example, the Highlands of Scotland, the Isle of Man, or ten generally the peripheries um, of the island, um, you tend to find that rates tend to be higher because there is just that lack of um, locums. Now with that, there's a really really good opportunity if you're willing to travel. Um, where there's an opportunity that comes up on our app sometimes that is called Stayaways. And that's actually where a pharmacy will pay your accommodation, your travel costs, and on top of your rate for you to actually come to them to fill a given shift because there, some areas are really crying out. So if anyone, if anyone fancies um, going to Scotland, um, for example, the highest hourly rate in 2023 was £95. That was actually up in Scotland because, again, there was that lack of locums there. Um, so it's nearly it can be quite exciting, um, as Olivia touched on before. Um, you might not know exactly how much money is going to be at your bank at the end of the month just with locum rates because they do fluctuate. And it is completely up to yourself as a self-employed um, locum how much, how often you work, and also you're completely in control of what you will work for. If you ever see a shift that you decide isn't high enough paid for yourself, you're under no obligation to take it. Um, so you really are in control of your own earning potential as well, which is quite nice. Um, and we do have some locums that can really gamify the system that way. Um, we've got some locums potentially a little work um, nearly 30 days in a month in those years where the rates are a little bit higher and then nearly take a month off. Um, so you really have the opportunity to shape um, your career in whatever way suits you. Yeah, and so next up, so we're just going to cover like some of the features that are available on OK Locum that can really help you boost your earnings and then also like to help you like, balance you know, your work life. So one of our most popular features is Negotiate. So via the app, you can search for shifts in your area. You can make it really personalized to you. You know, at, at any one time, there's over 100,000 shifts live on the app, but you can go into your settings and, you know, you can choose which sort of radius you want to travel. Um, and there's a lot of different filters that make it really personal to you. So the negotiate feature is really, really useful too. So like say, if you see um, a shift that's advertised for 30, 35 pounds an hour, and you would like to go a little bit higher, you can submit your request and it is sent then directly to the employer for them to, to either 
accept decline or then also renegotiate then with you so you're in a direct line um with the employer which is really really useful um sarah has also mentioned like stay away as being such a fantastic opportunity you know um i think some people have went to, like, also to like areas like cornwall and things like that there for a week and like you know that'd be a nice place to go to um and like you know they cover your um expen expenses accommodation travel so like there's a lot of benefit um if you wanted to like to see the see the country and um, there's a lot of opportunities there too um we also recommend you know block bookings it's a really good way to sort of plan your diary in advance and if you see a rate that you know that you really like and it's a, a shift or sorry it's a branch that you want to work in you can block book that for maybe like you know three to six months it means that it sort of like gives you back time that you aren't like you know applying for shifts and waiting for people to come back to you you can do that all in once and it's a really good way to plan your diary and it's a really good way also to see how much income then you actually will be getting monthly so it's mm -hmm. sort of like a good like determining factor um we also like some other features that we have that just aren't listed here but are very very useful is instant book so that means that it removes the need completely for applications. So it's available on most shifts now on the platform. And it, it, it does what it says. It's literally you're instantly booked into that shift. Um, and it, it secures it at that rate in the area and everything. So, you know, it sort of makes it more accessible for you to mm -hmm. um, earn your income then monthly too, which is um, a huge benefit. So this was another video, so I'm going to assume it doesn't play. Um, this is a testimonial from one of our stu student dispensers uh, we met in the past at the pharmacy show a couple of years ago. And whenever we send out the slides afterwards, I really recommend giving this a listen to. She talks about how she was able to manage her locum dispensing shifts around like her change in like, um, like lecture um, schedule. Um, and different like work experience and things like that there. So it's a really, really good insight that she had. Um, and she just found the, pl the platform really easy to use. Um, and the shifts that were available in her area were really beneficial to her. So I definitely recommend giving this one a listen to. I really do apologize that the sound isn't working on these videos, but definitely give it to a wee listen afterwards. Um, and that is, that is really us. So Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, and I think now we've got some, some time for some little Q and A, Craig. If there's any, if there's any questions from anybody. Hi, uh, thank you, uh, Olivia, and thank you, Sarah, for uh, this presentation. And I believe, uh, first of all, before we get into Q and A, just a few things to say that I, I believe a lot personally. Um, myself, I'll speak for myself, but I believe any attendees here that was here to, this evening was able to uh, take away something from uh, actually understanding what it entails to be a locum at the dispenser as a pharmacist. And uh, it was quite nice to understand what's also the prof, uh, the process and compliance, also documentation you need to have, what sort of like checks you know going go through. And um, also I really enjoyed the nice introduction at the start to explain the different roles you can be having as a pharmacist. And uh, I believe the main important bit was actually understanding uh, what decides the locum rates, because I believe a lot of people going to local mean thinking oh they're just going to be high rates but actually there's a uh, different uh, factors in place as you mentioned location you mentioned market and you mentioned the demand in itself so that was, i believe those are really useful information to learn today and uh, it's good to know that also you don't need to be a pharmacist essentially they need to qualify can already gain local meme and sort of uh, that flexibility for you already as a student by becoming local dispenser. So um, I hope um, anybody else found this session useful and able to go back home with some more notion and maybe give it a try this summer. I'm not sure if they qualify essentially, but thank you very much for this session. Thank you. Okay. Yes, you're very welcome. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Of course. And yeah, I'll just move straight into q and I'm mindful of time. We are about to finish the session. So we have about five minutes. So if there's any questions uh, you'd like to ask about the, directly about Locate Locum, about the company or about Locum in it as a dispenser or a pharmacist, I'll just read out the questions. All right. Okay, the first question says, do you need any qualification or experience to work as a locum dispenser? Mm, as a whether you're a pharmacist student in second year, 
So the, I'll just read the question again. Do you need any qualification or experience to work as a locum dispenser despite being a pharmacy student in second year? So whenever it comes to that, there is, so you will need to be able to reg be registered as a pharmacy student. So if you can already tick that box, you're a second year pharmacy student, that's all you need to worry about there. The next thing that you will need will be a reference. And that is usually, if it's neat, would be required to be a pharmacy related reference. So that would be say from the likes of a tutor, or as we mentioned before, if potentially you were a part-time, you work part-time in your local pharmacy, even as a shop assistant or something like that, um, we would require a reference from some, from that sort of side. Um, now, with that saying is it's sort of that age old question, you know, do you need experience in order to get these jobs and um, experience always helps. And the more experience you will, whenever it comes to some of these shifts is you'll be up against other people. So if there's anything that you can add strings to your bow, that obviously will help you stand out from the crowd. So, for example, whenever it comes to a shift, if you have absolutely no experience whatsoever and someone goes in for that same shift, um, even at the same level as you, even as a dispenser, if they have potentially a couple of extra experience, well, if they've got a few days extra experience, locum in before they may get preferential treatment just from the employer picking and choosing who they want to work in their store now Olivia did mention that there are the opportunities to potentially ring up and shadow um, I know that through university you'll be doing the likes of placements and potentially you can go in and do work experience days as well in the likes of pharmacy pharmacies and obviously a lot of those opportunities will be unpaid however that would sort of be a really good way to build your experience um, there's also a lot of ways in order to boost your knowledge um, um, like Olivia had talked about some of the free CPD and there's so many, there's so, so, so many free CPD, CPD platforms and resources and courses with some of which we can find on Locate a Locum as well. Um, so sort of building your experience out that way can also really help. Um, so I really hope that answers your question. Yeah, I hope it does. Um, thank you for the answer. I'll just prioritize some of the questions that I believe are not in the presentation and then I'll go back to the others. Oh, next question is, um, where can I get uh, any indemnity insurance from and is it free as a student? Uh, yes, yeah, so we work closely with the NPS, that's the National Pharmacy Association, and then the Pharmacist Defence Association, the PDA, then also offer insurance. I wouldn't be entirely sure if it is free as a student. Um. I'm if sure you were working as a student, you wouldn't require insurance as you'd be working as a dispenser. You only require the insurance if you're working as a fully qualified pharmacist. So that would be after you're qualified. Um, so I think in that regards, there probably isn't free insurance as a pharmacy student. However, what we can do is we can double check with our compliance team and we can get back to you with more detail on that. Um, but as far as I'm aware, that's how that works. Thank you. I'll move on to the next question. The next question asks, in terms of references from a tutor, what are they required to write for yourself? So what sort of information would they looking for? Um, well, it would obviously be everything to do with, um, say, for example, your work ethic. They're, you're really wanting someone to stand over yourself. Um, oh, brilliant. Someone's got the answer to that. Thank you very much, um, Deborah. <laughs> um, PDA offers free indemnity insurance for the first three months as newly qualified there we go didn't know that now we do that's brilliant um, but in terms of the reference it'll be everything to do with your work ethic you know potentially um, verifying that you are on the um, M farm degree potentially um, covering some of the maybe topics that you've studied and areas that you'll be um, familiar with um, and again that's sort of where uh, having a personal rep relationship with someone who is writing your reference can also help because essentially you just want them to big you up a good bit yeah thank you maybe a few more questions um all right okay the question asks is the is the work experience or the shadowing um a feature or okay a locum so if i understand the question correctly if it's a feature for shadowing in Locate Locum? No, there wouldn't be a feature in Locate Locum for shadowing. That would be something that you would do sort of self-serve, um, sort of ring in or contact in pharmacies on your own, and um, even ring in or contact in your local pharmacy. Um, 
would sort of be how you would come across that um or if they potentially i find university job boards and even working with your careers officer within your university they can be really helpful in sort of finding those sort of placements for you it's not something that we offer at locate locum thank you now a more specific question about the app uh, someone is asking where on the app can you add your mfam student evidence so that would be under your essential documents tab. Um, I'm trying to remember what is the actual name. I think it's, it's just my compliance documents. But what again, what we can do, Craig, is we can send out more detailed instructions on adding that. And we can also add in the email of our support team if you have any struggles or difficulties adding that back to the app. Thank you. All right. And uh, just a few last questions. Uh, probably the last one. Uh, so someone is asking, how does tax work in self-employed? Sorry. So how does tax work for a self-employed student? Is worth getting an accountant if I'm only working part time? So I am not a financial advisor. Before I start off on this. <laughs> Um, but sort of top level advice that we would give our locums is as a self as someone who's self-employed, you're required to pay tax after you earn over a thousand pounds um of income. So if you don't want to pay tax, you don't earn a thousand pounds in any given tax year is a way to avoid doing that completely. Um if you go over the thousand pound stretch threshold in any given year, you do have to complete a self-assessment. And this is sort of where personal preference comes into it. I know that there are some people who really enjoy numbers, really enjoy, enjoy maths, really like doing all that sort of stuff. And they, they will complete the self-assessment themselves. Um, whenever it comes to the end of the tax year, we do have some resources that we can provide um, for, via our website. And we've partnered with an accountant to provide some guidance on that. However, there are some people who will be born like myself who don't like maths and they give it all to an accountant so they don't have to worry about it. Um, so that's sort of where it would come into personal preference. Um, if you're working part time and your tax maybe wouldn't be terribly high um, because you're only working maybe the odd couple of shifts in the break and you wouldn't be earning over that thousand pound threshold maybe. Um, it might not be worth your time getting the accountant, but potentially if you then decide to go into local work full time, that might be something that you want to get involved with. But again, it's complete personal preference. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll just ask one more question. That'll be the last one for tonight, because I believe it's quite an important question. So um, the last person is asking, if you signed up for this for a dispensing shift, but you do not have any essential experience, would this be something that the employer will help with it? So let me get make sure I have that right in my head. So if you've signed up and you have been accepted with mm -hmm. for the shift without experience, mm -hmm. well, that means the employer is happy to take you with their current experience level. So the mm -hmm. employer has been, has been able to see you've got the accreditation, they'll have read your reference. If they're happy to take you as you are, that is completely up to themselves. And again, naturally by working that shift, you'll gain experience. And again, that's sort of where Olivia and myself have both touched on earlier on in the presentation. Really, your networking skills come into play there where you're, if you want to get more guidance and more help, and more assistance, and that is the place to do it when you're there in store. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the answers. And thank you for everybody that has joined us tonight. And I hope you took something from me and be able to kind of uh, gather also information that was useful for you to understand whether local means something that you guys are looking after or something that you might pick for the future. And uh, I hope uh, Olivia and Sarah today was able to answer all your questions, provide you all the information necessary to uh, obviously make an important decision. Um, this webinar is recorded, so essentially we'll be probably um, we'll publish it on our YouTube channel. So if you any bit you've missed out or have more questions or something you didn't understand properly, you're able to go back and watch it again. And we are going to uh, we'll double check. Uh, we'll leave you and Sarah, but we might send out the presentation later on for people to have a look at directly. And if there's uh, any question that have been asked tonight, we're able to answer, we're able to clarify that with you again through your, through sending out information through the emails. And at this point, I will just end the recording.